Hey there, my name is Lilith and I'm the creator behind fashion art label Ziegenthaler based in Melbourne, Australia and welcome to Things You Need To Know Before Painting Your Denim Jacket Part 2. So I did a video about six months ago about uh, the top five things you need to know before painting your denim jacket and that has been very well received so I decided that I'm going to do a part two so this part two is based off of a lot of the questions I got in the comment section of that video so I'm going to be answering a lot of those queries in regards to my experience as a fabric artist or a fashion artist for the last couple of years as a business. If you haven't already, I would recommend that you watch the first video that is five things you need to know before painting your denim jacket. Uh, a lot of the things that I will be discussing today relate back or reference to that video and it's just a very good video to sort of explain the foundations of using fabric paint and the different things that you just sort of really need to know before painting your denim jacket. We're going to be looking into a couple of topics today and that is how to avoid cracks in your artwork the aftercare of the denim jacket and also heat fusing techniques. Obviously not as many things as the last video but I will go more into depth into these because there are lots of different things that I've learned along the way that I'd love to share with you. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, cracks in your artwork. I know that this can be very frustrating when you put a lot of work into something and then you realize that that your artwork does show little cracks in it. Usually it doesn't really take away from the artwork itself but it's just a it's something that you might find along the way and there are a couple of different factors that play into this. I'm not going to go into depth about the first factor and that is the type of paint that you use. I do go into depth about that in my last video about the uh, advantages of using fabric paint. So definitely make sure that you're using a fabric paint used for fabric and not an acrylic paint. But there are also different factors that may uh, help you try to avoid cracks in your artwork. Um, and that has to do with the elasticity of the denim jacket you're painting on, the layers of fabric paint that you're putting on your jacket, and then also just how you treat your jacket afterwards. So in regards to elasticity of a denim jacket, obviously most denim jackets, if they are a good denim, they're very crisp, they're very sturdy, and they don't really stretch that much. But I have had some instances where I will get lots of cracks in my artwork, and that's purely because that the fabric that I've painted on is quite stretchy. And even though fabric paint is very elastic and more elastic than acrylic paint, there is obviously still a threshold of which the paint will crack. So if you're painting on a particular part of a denim jacket, or let's just say a particular part of some jeans, if you're painting on a pocket of jeans, when you wear jeans, the shape of the pocket is obviously where your bottom is and that can obviously stretch over time. So you will definitely start to find cracks in your artwork and that's just purely by the shape that the fabric is molding to. So usually you can avoid cracks in your artwork if you don't paint excessive layers of paint over places that might stretch. You may not find this with a denim jacket but as I said, this could happen with jeans, especially around the backside area. Uh, if you're painting like a very tight denim jacket, say one that you need to button up and it does stretch, especially if you're a woman around like the sort of breast area, it is going to stretch, which means if you do have lots of layers of paint around that area, the more stretch that place has, the more cracks you will find will happen. And this can also just come down to the design that you do. Maybe don't try not to do as many layers or maybe try to avoid areas like that or even just use minimal designs in that area. If you do like a um, very full coverage design over an area that's quite elastic or stretchy, say something like this where it's like full coverage paint, it's more likely to crack than if say you do a design like this which is more lines. You will see less cracks in line designs like this rather than full coverage areas. Obviously the more layers of paint you put over an elastic area, the more 
it's going to crack. You may also get cracks in your artwork depending on how you care for your jacket and I'm going to go into aftercare later on in this video. But also another thing about cracks in artwork is that sometimes it just comes from natural wear and tear. Obviously as I said fabric paint is quite elastic and it's quite flexible but at the end of the day I don't think that there is any fabric paint out there that won't crack over time. And you can even see examples of this in t-shirts maybe that you've had for a long time that you have bought and that have been manufactured with fabric paint and if you're washing them all the time and you're wearing them all, all the time the paint is gonna crack there's going to be cracks so it's it's a, also just a natural wear and tear process i do have lots of jackets that i've painted and i've had them for a very long time and it just happens but if you're taking these steps on trying to avoid cracks you will have minimal cracks in your artwork so the next thing we're going to look into is heat fusing techniques <laughs> Heat fusing is something that we do to fabric paint to make sure that the paint sticks to your fabric. And obviously fabric is something, something that needs to be washed. And when I get a lot of questions about, hey, I've just painted my denim jacket. Can I get it wet? Can I put it in the washing machine? How can I wash it? How can I clean it? Heat fusing is usually one of the things that we do to make sure that we can do all of these things and we can take care of our jacket. As far as I'm concerned, a lot of fabric paints that I've come across in the past will have some sort of heat fusing element to it. The most common way to heat fuse is an iron and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I use Set A Color Opaque and their heat fusing technique is ironing the artwork on the fabric. It just makes sure that the fabric paints are permanently stuck onto your jacket and it just means that you can do things like get it wet. Specifically for Set A Color Opaque it is five minutes of ironing. I do get asked how hot the iron needs to be and it needs to be the temperature that you would usually use to iron the specific material. So for denim I would use a medium to high iron. And it is very, very important to iron it from the inside. Don't put your hot iron on your design. Don't do it. I have definitely indeed done that before and it did not turn out well. If you do iron fabric paint straight onto the design, the paint will come off. It will stick to your iron because your iron is hot and it will come off of the denim jacket. So make sure you are actually ironing on the underside of the denim jacket. Now, if you have something like a fleece denim jacket, so a denim jacket that is obviously denim on the outside but fleece, you might find it hard to iron it, especially trying to get the heat through the fleece to the denim jacket. This is when I would recommend for you to actually iron it on the front side but make sure that you're covering your design with a piece of fabric. Uh, I usually use an old sheet, it could be like a pressing cloth, but just make sure that it's covered by a nice protective layer of fabric and then you can iron it that way. And I always just make sure that this, that the protective fabric is also a dark colour. Sometimes you might get some transfer because we are ironing on the top. <clears throat> you might get some transfer paint onto the fabric and that's probably just because the heat is coming from the top rather than the bottom which is where you want the fabric to sort of stick to but that's just another way that you can do it if you do have a lining like fleece or if you have a synthetic lining and you can't go as hot as you want to you can go over the top another thing that you should know as well and i'm referencing my first video about this is that making sure that your fabric paint is 100 percent dry before you heat fuse it as i said in my first video it's obviously very very important that you make sure you let your jacket dry 100 percent before even trying it on or doing anything with it just so it doesn't smudge but for me I always just make sure that I leave about I would say 12 hours at the absolute minimum but for me I always wait 24 hours for the paint to dry before I heat fuse it because sometimes when you heat fuse it if the paint hasn't sat on the fabric for a long time there will be more likely a chance of it transferring and this has actually happened even when I've ironed the underside of the denim jacket I I remember ironing it maybe 
three or four hours after I thought it had dried and when I did iron the underside some of the paint actually came off onto my ironing board. So just make sure that you wait at least 24 hours until you heat fuse your product. If you don't have an iron sometimes you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer but I think that is also a sort of big topic I would rather make a whole video about in regards to heat fusing items that you can't really iron. For the time being because this video is about denim jackets using an iron is usually the most practical way to do things if your fabric paint is different make sure that you just sort of look at the instructions usually most fabric paints will have some sort of heating element to to fuse the paint onto the fabric and so heat fusing is a very important thing because it will ensure that we can actually care for our garment and that comes into our next topic which is aftercare <laughs> lots of questions about this like can I wet my garment can I wash it can I put it in the dryer can I dry clean it I'm going to be going through specific things about set a color opaque it might be different for your fabric paint that you're using but I also go into methods where you can actually figure out what is best for you and your fabric paint that you're using so for set a color opaque if you heat fuse your product you are able to wash your garment in water as warm as 30 degrees celsius i don't know what that is in fahrenheit sorry i <laughs> uh, just wanted to butt in and say that it's actually up to 40 degrees celsius which is 104 degrees fahrenheit but yeah so it means that you you should be able to wash it in a relatively warm cycle in the washing machine but <clears throat> you can definitely put these in the washing machine 100 percent. the thing is is that because washing machines are a little bit more aggressive than say a hand wash there is more likeliness that you will get more wear and tear in your garments which means that your garment is going to sort of deteriorate over time well not deteriorate but the integrity of the design will sort of start to deteriorate this is why i always recommend and I've recommended this to my clients is that if you're going to be washing your jacket I would recommend a cold hand wash you can use any sort of detergent as long as it's mild and it's not like aggressive bleach detergent just a normal detergent and I would say a cold to lukewarm hand wash if you're always chucking your garments into the washing machine as I said it just gets tossed around a little bit more and will show signs of aging or wear and tear but I mean the thing is is about denim jackets how many times would you put your denim jacket into the wash not many people do and if I do say that you can put them in the washing machine I would usually say once every six months or so and make sure it is a cold gentle wash as well you can use detergent that's fine but yeah, that's what I would usually say. And that's for set of color opaque. But if you have different fabric paints, what you can do or what I would recommend is just, just doing a swatch and experimenting with what you can and can't do with that in regards to washing it. And this is where I'll reference my first video again. I do go into how you should swatch your colors before you use your fabric paints just to see how different colors are on different colors of fabric. What you can do is that when you actually do this process and what I did when I first started out was I did, I did my color swatches, I heat fused them and then I chucked them in the washing machine. A hot wash, a cold wash, I even chucked it in the dryer. This was just gonna show me how stubborn the paints were gonna be and for me that's when I realized that yes you can actually put if you're using set of color opaque you can actually put the jackets in the dryer the only thing is as I said over time it's gonna deteriorate and it's just going to crack more faster it's just going to look a little bit more worn I would not recommend putting your jackets in a dryer I would recommend line drying it like putting it online and letting it drip dry just because that would be the best for the fabric paint but that's what I would recommend is do a sample of all the swatches of your paints heat fuse it and then put it in the washing machine maybe even see how hot you can do it or like if worse comes to worse and I don't have the answers and no one has the answers I would just say you just need to message the manufacturer I messaged the manufacturer for set of color opaque maybe a year ago because I painted on something and someone wanted to dry clean it and you can't dry clean items with set of color opaque but there are fabric paints out there that you can use that do have uh, dry cleaning resistance to them so 
yeah, that's that. It's just all about experimenting and making sure that you're experimenting and sampling and trying things out before you do your main artwork. Uh, but yeah, that is everything I need to talk about in this video. If you have any more questions, please uh, put them down in the comments. I might answer it, I might not, or I might give you a short answer and then hopefully compile more topics in regards to doing a part three in this series because there is so much stuff. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please make sure to give it a like. If you want more content like this as well, please make sure to subscribe. I put out tutorials, I put out videos about my own artworks. So if you are into all of that, then please subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Happy painting. Good night. Bye.